So maybe we haven't given our road bikes enough credit. If you've been watching the beautiful race that is Strada Bianchi, then you've seen the pros out tearing up the beautiful white Tuscan gravel roads of Italy on their road bikes with small modifications and seemingly no issues. So that would make you ask the question, do I really need a gravel bike to ride gravel? And to find out what you can and can't get away with, I'm gonna take my brand new Orbea Orca road bike on an epic gravel adventure. In fact, we're gonna ride the exact same route that Simon Richardson and I rode last year for the All-American Gravel Ride. So let's jump into it and see what happens. Massachusetts. This is one of the most pretty areas that I get to call home technically and ride in and I'm really I just absolutely love it up here. When I got to come up here with Cy and show it off last year it was such a blast and today although we're dodging rain I'm gonna show you guys how sweet this place really is. So join me on one of my favorite rides and I'll share some tips along the way to get you guys out on your own road bike gravel adventure. So if you see Instagram, social media, all that stuff, then you follow a bunch of pro riders and you know that they ride their road bikes on all kinds of wild terrain. And so you're thinking, hey, if they can do it, why can't I? I mean, after all, it is a gravel road bike. Yes, that's true. But you might not actually need a gravel bike if you know yourself. Now, let's do a test. You're riding down this beautiful gravel dirt road on your road bike, the river's on this side, and then off to the left, you spot a beautifully manicured single track trail. You look at that and you either say, ha ha, ha 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 ha, or you say, nah. Now, if you said, nah, then that's a good sign. You know yourself, you're gonna be mature, you're gonna be responsible, you're not gonna go out of control, but if you're like me and you see that trail and you know, ah, I can't not hit it. I gotta hit it, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta see where it goes. That is a completely different video. But if you're mature, if you love to take care of your bike, if you know that you're not gonna cross that line, then in that case, you should be in good shape. Okay, so we're about an hour in already. If you guys remember the all-American gravel ride with Cy, we started down in Greenfield, Massachusetts, and then we flew up here. This is literally one of my favorite spots. We've already hit one of the covered bridges, just this cascading little river with those small little waterfalls just dropping everything down. It's absolutely breathtaking up here. There's not a soul to bother you up here either, which I absolutely love, and this is properly maintained gravel. It's not too gnarly, and the road bike is doing just fine so far. I know you guys are gonna ask me, how do we know if it's maintained gravel? But outside of Kamu, I think I have the solution, and it's this. If you can ride either one-handed or no-handed, I right, that is the new international sign if it is maintained, road bikeable gravel. When I was talking about maintained gravel before, we're on a really good stretch of maintained gravel. You can see that the township has put down a lot of stone here, but those stones are now starting to unearth themselves a little bit. You need the stone so the water does drain through and it keeps the roads nice and strong so they're not getting big potholes. But if you're running really lean tires or super high pressure or something like that, it's just one of these off stones that you can catch definitely make a really bad pinch flat. Now, this stuff though, totally good on your road bike. You just have to do those things that we talked about. But up here, there's another road where you could take a left onto it, and it's absolutely not the kind of road that I'd recommend for your road bike, especially if you don't have a lot of clearance and 28s are already rubbing. As soon as you start to get that mud and stuff in there, not a good look. So let's go check those out. So this is that good maintained gravel, but this was the left-hander that I was talking about. This, just like that, boom, all of a sudden it switches over and you can see it's a lot more treacherous. Big rocks, mud, nothing is maintained at all. This is still technically a road. It would be a lot of fun on a gravel bike for a big adventure, but on your road bike, I have to say, I don't think it'd be that great. And I'll tell you, because of that terrible instinct that I have that I have to hit those trails, I didn't have a lot of friendly team owners because there were a lot of broken bikes. All 
right, so let's dig in more. Let's talk about one of the big ones, and that is tires. Now, if you're riding a proper road bike, then the thing that you're gonna be limited most by is tire size that you can fit in the bike, meaning here and here, and not rubbing all the paint and the frame to nothing. So you don't wanna ride a bigger tire than you can actually fit in your bike, because when you get up and you go side to side, it'll rub the frame and that won't be good for anyone, and it'll, unfortunately, it would ruin your frame. So the maximum for a proper road bike, you're probably gonna see 28C, maybe 30, on this bike, you can actually get away with 32 c tires, which is pretty sweet. Now, after you've chosen what size tire you can fit in there, um, you're gonna wanna start to think about the type of tire that you're gonna be able to fit in there. Obviously, I would tell you to run two bliss tires because you don't wanna be running a 21 c tire with a tube in it. You hit a rock at 120 PSI, that's not gonna be good for anyone. You wanna make sure that you're running big tires, tubeless, with lower pressure, maybe 60 PSI, because it's gonna get the tire to have a little deflection, it's gonna be able to move, it's gonna give you a little bit better traction, and, well, overall, a much better experience. We're actually in Vermont right now, and these climbs are notoriously steep. The roads fly down, and then they come right into what I'd like to call a brick wall. This one is super tough. Your road bike was designed for much faster speeds, bigger gears to go faster, smaller gears because you're not climbing as steep of roads. This bike that I have here has a 48-35 up front, and then it has a 10-28 in the rear, which is a super wide range. Back when I was racing, and what probably many of you have is a 53-39, maybe an 11-25 which if you're gonna do a big steep climb like this, you guys can already see my cadence and I'm going pretty hard. It's gonna be a really hard day out. And the worst thing that you could do is have to get off and walk. Coming from someone that's had to do that a lot when these types of gears weren't available, it's not fun. So definitely opt for a wide range on your road bike if you plan on doing a bit of gravel. And they can really make you feel like you did a, a gym day with 100 squats if you're not careful because you have to push a pretty low cadence if you don't have the right gears. Woo, we are over halfway through this ride and we have some more massive climbs coming up that my legs are gonna be screaming at me for. But on the other side of the coin, we've also got some really pretty descents as well. All right, so we got to the top of the climb here. We're looking out over here. It's absolutely beautiful, picturesque. Mountains all just tattered along here. But now what goes up must come down. This super steep downhill now is in front of us. And I have to tell you guys that you've got to go slow if you're riding your road bike on gravel. With 28 to 32 C tires, if you hit even a small rock, it could puncture and even worse, could send you flying. Now, on the other side, if you were riding a gravel bike and you had 45 C tires in a less aggressive position, you'd be able to take a big rock like that, like a champ, and just keep motoring, no problems at all. But truly, you have to moderate your speed. You've gotta be mature. You've got to get both fingers on the brakes, get your weight back, and go down these slowly. I've seen so many times riders ripping the descent only to come out with double flats at the bottom. So. When you descend on a road bike, on gravel, with some rocks, you gotta go slow. Woo! Love that view. So this is my Orbea Orca road bike. Now I've got 32C uh, Pirelli slick tires on it. Now if you guys are thinking that you're gonna take your road bike and you're gonna put some knobs or some semi-slicks on here, that's not gonna be a good look for you. You really do want to stick to completely 100% slick tires. That's gonna be the wrong tire for the wrong kind of bike. Definitely you have to go with slick tires. Now the other thing, if you're gonna do big gravel days, because we get so desolate, so far away, consider an alternative place to store things. Maybe a, a frame pack up on the front or down below here, a bigger bag in the back, and some additional water. Something that's on your back or a third bottle cage that mounts here on the seat post or even down here in this area are all good things to add to a road bike that you're gonna be using on long gravel days. All right, now it shouldn't have to be said, but I'm gonna say it anyways, because you see things when you're in this type of job and as a pro for a long time, I've seen people show up on gravel rides with 120 PSI, 21C, disc wheels, tri-spokes, hyper-light climbing wheels at 
probably a thousand grams total that specifically say on it for uphill riding only. Those are things, just keep those on the road. <laughs> we don't wanna see those here on gravel. We don't want anyone to get hurt. Truly, you do have to be mindful. And definitely, if you're gonna opt for a wheel set that's gonna be carbon fiber, get something that's sturdy and designed for the task that you plan on using it for. We're here, this is it. Last climb up to some dirt and all downhill into Greenfield. All right, so let's talk about road geometry. Now the thing with road geometry is that it's meant to go super fast on asphalt. And that means that you're gonna have a really tall saddle, road pedals, you're gonna be very arrow, long, tucked in like a snake, just slithering its way down the beautiful asphalt. Now on a gravel bike, you're gonna be more upright, taller front end, your arms are gonna be more in an aggressive position, but you're gonna have a lot more control over the bike. When you're on your road bike and you're long and pushed out like that, you're not gonna have the ability to shift your body weight if you hit a pothole or a rock or something wrong. So you really do need to think about, and this is one of the most important things I'm gonna say during this video, when you're planning your route, look for maintained gravel roads. Now Kamut, our partner here with GCN, could help you out to be able to look for that type of road. But basically, that's a maintained gravel road where the town drags it with a machine every year. They make sure that it's nice and smooth surface. Truthfully, it's better than a lot of the roads, paved ones, in my town in Massachusetts, but that's for another video as well. <laughs> Truth be told though, guys, the most important thing you can do is make sure that you're not going overboard when you ride your road bike off-road. Anything that's taking only four by fours, dirt bikes, ATVs, huge Jeeps and stuff like that, it's not a great place for your road bike, which brings me to another point. So if I've talked to any of my friends that have been at a high level about going out and riding gravel, they'd be totally fine with that. We have plenty of races and events and things that we've done where we've ridden our road bikes on light gravel before, no problems. But if I ask some of my new, just getting into cycling friends, if they take their road bikes out on some gravel with me, they'd be a little bit freaked out. So really, the thing that you wanna do, just call up some friends if you're just getting into it. Say, hey, I wanna take my road bike on some new gravel, and before you know it, the bug will bite, you'll have a t-shirt, and you'll have baggies over your shorts, and you'll be tearing it up and having a blast. Now, all of this is great, but make sure, my most important tip for you guys to take away from is make sure that you ride the right bike for the right terrain. Don't ride your road bike on things that really are designed for gravel, and don't ride your gravel bike on things that are designed for mountain biking. And for mountain bikers, probably shouldn't ride your bike on the road, it just doesn't seem that much fun. guys that is a wrap finally made it to greenfield the pizzas are waiting and i can't wait i want to thank you guys all so much for watching with me leave a comment down below let us know what you think if you've ridden your road bike on some serious gravel and uh, gotten away with it and how far you've pushed the boundaries that's all for me it's pizza time see you guys there we go thank you thanks so much have a good night